Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. For those that are new, I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. In this video, I am going to show you how I am going to put a brand new logo of, um, this is, um, I think it's called an Afghan's, Afghan Hound Dog. Um, a client of mine designed it and I had it digitized. It came out really, really nice. And she wants this logo to be on this sweater. And this is a sweater, it's a hoodie. And um, it has the zipper, okay, so it's kind of like a jacket and stuff, so really cute. So let me show you how I'm actually going to do this, okay? Now, of course, I am not going to open up the, um, the jacket. I'm actually going to hoop this as is with, you know, with the zipper closed on top of the hooping station. I also want to talk to you a little bit about if you have a single needle machine, how would you go about um, hooping this item so that way you can do it on your SC1900 as well, okay? I always like to talk about not just the multi-needle machines and how you hoop it, but also the SC1900 um, because I know that a lot of people use the single needle machines and you want to be able to do that, okay? Now, one of the things that you can do is I use the software in Brilliance. And when you have the software in Brilliance, one of the things that you can do is you can actually print out the design, all right? Now, when you print out the design, it's actually going to show you how it's going to be. And it's going to have like a little marking on it where it has like a little X where it's going to show you where the center is, okay? Now, what I would do is I would cut that out. And then what I would do is pin it where you want it to be on the actual sweatshirt or sweater, okay? Hooping this item, I would actually open this up. And then what I would do is on my hoop, I would hoop cutaway stabilizer. I would spray it with temporary heat adhesive. And then what I would do is put this in here and then just place this in the area, okay? But first I would actually pin where I would want the actual item to be embroidered, all right? After you have it pinned on the shirt, that's when you would take your hoop and you would place this and try to put the um, image right smack in the middle. Then I would carry this over to the machine and I would snap it in. Now, of course, I have this the wrong way because this is how you would do it, okay? Because this is the, this is the out of the, the machine, you would snap it in this way, okay? If you were to see the machine right here, this is how you would, you know, snap it in because I would have the embroidery bed right here. But this is how I would hoop that item. So I would make sure that this is um, with basting, and I know you can't see. Oh, yeah, you can't, okay. With um, the cutaway stabilizer, I would just, uh, you know, hoop the stabilizer first, spray it, but when you spray it though, one of the things that I recommend is when you are spraying, if you have a dollar store near you, buy one of these. These are these little covers that people put on the, you could buy them in the Odo section of the dollar store. This is the cover that you use in order for the steering wheel. Take the stabilizer, hoop this in, then take this, put this around it, okay? See how it just goes? And then take your temporary spray adhesive and then spray it. The reason why I say to do this is so that way when the spray goes, it kind of goes all over the place, you don't want the spray to get into your hoop because then what happens is you're gonna have to wash it and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a, a way to help keep it clean. These are very inexpensive. They're only a dollar. So after like it gets really dirty, you can throw it out, buy another one. Or if you want, you can take this and you can throw this in the washing machine too. Okay, so just something for, you know, a little tip for, for folks to think about. So, you know, just letting you know, just letting you know, oh my goodness, can't talk today. Okay, just letting you know how I would actually hoop it if I was actually going to do this on the single needle machine. And it's not just the SC1900, it could be any other single needle machine that you have. Okay, so I'm going to put this away because I'm actually going to do this on my multi-needle machine. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hoop, which is a five by seven, and I'm going to use cutaway stabilizer, okay? And let me show you how I'm going to do this, all right? Now, I, I'm going to actually use this part, and this is the part where you actually hoop your logo on, you know, where when you're hooping it. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm doing this. These are extenders, okay? So I'm just taking these out because it is, hold on, it's held on by screws. So I'm just taking, I'm removing these. Okay, so I don't need this for this. Okay, I just need this portion right here. And when I got my Hoop Master, it came with like a little booklet. And what I did was I Xerox copy the book. And it has like this little document right here where it has Hoop Master Placement logo. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do is I like to look at the size of the item because that will tell me exactly where to place this item on this hooping station, okay? And let's see, this is an extra, extra large, and I believe it's a woman's shirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look on here, okay? And an extra, extra large would be similar to a 2T. And for ladies right here, it says E20, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this. The E is the neckline right here, okay? And 20 is the number right here, and the 20 is where I want to show right through here, okay? The little hole right here. So I'm going to position this here, and it's in the E20. Awesome, okay? I'm going to get me a piece of cutaway stabilizer. I only need one for this particular item. Okay, I have my hoop. I put this right in here. I'm going to take my cutaway and just place it right in here. Okay, because I'm doing this in a multi-needle machine, I don't need to have this unzipped. So I'm going to close this up because what I need to do, let me take this out of the way. So that way I have less clutter on the table and you guys can see. Now take away the extra hoop as well. Okay, so now what I do is I just take the shirt and then I just fit it over here. Okay. Now the neckline, and I forgot about the neckline. Let me look on the thing again. Um, the neckline on a 2T is E20. So this neckline should be in correlation to these little edges right over here. And I don't know if you see them. I don't think you do. So let me just take this over. I had the camera plugged in, sorry. Okay, so just so that you guys can see what this is, these have these little things that say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, okay? So when you see that it says E20, okay, if you notice right here, and I already have it covered, see how the, the zero is on the 20? So this is where it's supposed to be when I pluck it in. And then now that I have this on here, okay, when you look at the neckline, the neckline should be over here where the E is. So that means I gotta pull this up right around here. This is where it should rest. The zipper should be in line with this line, okay? So I just have to make sure that it is you know, just put in correctly. So I'm gonna place the camera down because I need both hands for this now because see, as you can see, it's kind of like crooked right now. So, um, all right, let me put this in here and you just put it in neat, take your time, don't rush, you know, um, as with all type of hooping and stuff like that, you don't want to rush. Um, you always want to take your time so that you can hoop things neatly and correctly. And I don't know if you guys noticed. Do you guys see this? See how I kind of like bunch it up at the bottom? Okay, this is just an easy way that I use to make sure that everything is nicely lined. Okay. 
And if you can see right here, um, let me put it on here. See how it is? It's aligned with the E. Okay, my zipper is going straight down. All right, and it's nice and neat. Okay, and once I have this situated exactly where I want it, I'm just going to make sure that it's perfect. Um, all right. I always like taking my time. I don't like rushing and stuff like that because I like to enjoy what I'm doing. All right. Good, I have everything perfect. Now what I'll do is I'll just take this and it has these little slits, you know, it has the little three things. This is going to get caught in here, okay? In all of them, that's what, it fits right in here, okay? And stuff. Then what you do is like, this is the part that I love. You just go like this and there you go. The logo is going to be right here. So now all I have to do is just take it, pull it out, and I'm good, just to take it over to the machine. Everything is nice and taut and ready to go. Isn't that cool? All right, so now I'm gonna head over to the machine and what we're going to do is we're going to embroider this beautiful logo on this shirt. So this is gonna be really cool. So let's go on over to the uh, multi needle machine. I'm gonna do it on the six needle machine and let's see how it comes out. All right, guys, I am here at the multi-needle machine. And, you know, at this point, now that this is already, you know, in there, what I can do if I want to, I'm going to put this in through. I can actually unzip this if I feel like it, you know, if I feel that it's something that I want to do, I can do that. Or if not, I can leave it as is. But the thing is, see how this machine has like an arm? Do you see that? No, I don't think you do. Well, anyway. Here, there you go. This is the arm, okay? And this is the thing. You want to be able to put this around this, okay? You don't want to put the whole thing on top of here because what's going to happen is you're going to sew the back to the front, okay? So what you do is you just place it in here. And you can do it one of two ways. You can unzip this if you want, okay? Or I usually put my hands in here and I make sure that the back of the item is nowhere near this area that it's going to sew. So I kind of like run my hand back there to make sure and everything is fine, okay? And it's good to go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select my design. And as you see, I, I just selected it. Looks good. Um, I already have my black thread on my first needle. So I'm going to hit set and then I'm going to hit end edit and it's perfect. And then I'm just going to do a little trace. I always do this because I just want to make sure. And I don't know if you guys see it. There is a little red dot over there. And I just like to do that because I want to make sure that the needle is not going to hit the side of any of these magnetic hoops. You always want to double check that because you just never know. Remember, Magnetic Hoops is not a brother product. It's actually from a third-party vendor, and they do make these hoops for the machine, but sometimes, you know, you want to make sure that your design actually fits in there because, you know, the last thing you want is for your needle to hit the side of these, of these things, and then you do some damage to your machine, okay? So anyway, I'm going to hit embroider, and I'm going to let this baby embroider. It's going to come out really cute. So let's go.
done. That was a very, very simple stitch. Um, now let's take it over to the cutting table and let's finish this off for the customer. Okay, look at how nice that came out. Really, really nice. So let's go over to the cutting table. And as you can see, someone showed up. Here's Mello getting in the way as always, right in front of the cutting table. He always knows exactly where I need to go. So every time he shows up, it's like he knows where I need to go. So Boo Boo, I need you to move. Thank you, appreciate you. Okay, so I'm going to now make sure Set up the camera so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And then he plops there again. Okay, so he's not getting the hint. All right, so I'm going to have to work around him. All right, so I'm going to take this off. I'm going to open up the zipper. Take out the bottom. And when you're storing these Mighty Hoops, always make sure that all the wordings are always facing each other. You store them like this, okay? You don't want to store them the other way because it, it's just, you know, it kind of uses up the magnets and stuff. That's what the company recommends. So always, when you're putting them away, make sure that the wording is stuck to, to face each other, okay? So now let me close this up because I just want to take a look at it and see how it, it turned out. Let's see this here. Really, really nice. Perfect. Looks good. Awesome. Great placement. Great placement and everything. Looks really, really nice. Okay. So now we're not done yet though because I have to cut around it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. And as you can see, you have your stabilizer here. So what I usually do is I cut around the image, but you don't want to cut close to these stitches. Okay. Hope you can see everything. Yeah, you can. You don't want to cut close to the stitches. All right. So what I usually do is I like these scissors. These are uh, fis Fiskers, Fiskers scissors. Let me see if I can make it so that you can see, because you know my English. There you go. See Fiskers stainless steel. I like these to cut the uh, the stabilizer. So, so this is how usually I cut. As you can see, um, well, you'll definitely see when I'm done. As you can see, I always leave some spaces in there. You don't want to cut too close to the stitches. That's a no-no, okay? You don't want to do that. And be careful you're not actually cutting the item also because I have done that in the past, okay? I've actually cut the product by mistake while trying to cut the stabilizer out. There you go. All right, so throw this out. And this is how I would cut it. Now, some people will go in and they'll cut around it. I don't. I like to leave it the way it is. You know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go back and maybe like in these areas, I'll just do like a, a round edge, you know, just to make it a little rounder instead of like a square. I'll just cut around like that you know just to make it a little bit neater you know just to cut around you know that's all just so you don't have those points there you go just to make it a little rounder that's all I mean it's a preface you don't have to um, I don't think the customers mind haven't gotten a complaint, even when I haven't rounded them off. I, you know, customers really are okay with it and stuff. So this is done, guys. I just have some stabilizer that fell in there. All right, so this is all done. So all I have to do now is zip it up. And as you can see, it's the logo on the shirt. Came out really, really nice. Um, I always use these as samples. And usually what I do too is when you test out your um, your sample stitches, here's a, an idea. In the back of the stabilizer, I will usually put the name of the customer that I did this for, which I'll, I'll do that. And then I'll usually put down the weight of the thread that was used and the size of the needle that I used as well. So that way, when, if the customer comes back and says, hey, I want to have that same design done, 
but I wanted a different color or something like that. I can change the color, but I, I want to remember the weight of the thread that I used and the size needle that I used as well. So this one is actually with a 40 weight thread with a 7511 size needle. And um, it's a very good idea to do that. I always put that in the back of the stabilizer because as I make all these orders, um, I, you can forget, you can forget who you made it for and how you made it. So just a little, a little tip for you guys. That's how I usually do. And then I just save these and I have them all packed up in my closet back there. So now what I have to do now is just really just package this up really nice and neat with my business cards and stuff and call the customer and let them know that the item is ready to pick up. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing. And also please join me on Friday at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time for Embroidery Happy Hour. It's a time where I like to share my projects. I like to also share um, my advice and tips and, you know, it's just a fun hour to spend together. Okay, so um, hope you, you consider uh, joining me Friday evenings. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great one. Bye.